Domestic birds come here to nest and breed, making it look like a factory in a bird sanctuary. And this beautiful place that, uh, that he's built over here, uh, that was, was it like this when he built it or has it grown since then? Complex used to look like this even 25 years ago, hmm. except that we have added some new manufacturing facilities. But other than that, the complex is fairly similar. We have added a school. Hmm. Basically, we have added a few houses, hmm. uh, essentially preserved the way it used to hmm. uh, be. But Kasturba's business methods cannot survive modern competition. His uh, uh, idea was to create employment on a very large scale. Hmm. He wanted to create wealth for the society. Uh, he was very keen that India be made self-reliant. Hmm. And it was with this uh, uh, ambition and dream that he started this company. And uh, currently what we are trying to do is to make sure that we remain very, very competitive. Uh, that time we put up several products for import substitution. Now we need to, uh, uh, to go for uh, products which are global size. Uh, and therefore we have to make uh, certain changes. And a lot of my time currently is going in uh, uh, making those things happen, mm -hmm. you know. My father knew Gandhiji very well. So he took me to Gandhiji when I went to Delhi. And I used to attend Gandhiji's prayers every evening. And I think that little influence now I feel may have played my part in making me stay here. A true rural development was started by my husband also. And uh, we were doing a lot of and we are still doing lot of eye camps, lots and lots of eye camps. Then we used to do little hut building in one area. And supposing there's some crisis of water, then the company will send them water with the pipeline, everything. So when did the change start to happen in their life? What is happening, the most tribal people, they are also getting advanced. They have got two wheelers. Thank God that they can also come to the places they can travel. And one person always told, traveling is progress. Kasturhai Lalbhai is a man the city of Ahmedabad owes much to. It was he who helped build some of its finest educational institutions and the tradition of community responsibility is something his heirs continue to hold dear. Every educational institute that you will see is housed on the land that was procured by Dalaji. You see, uh, Ahmedabad Education Society was a, uh, a trust that was formed and LD Engineering, Far School of Pharmacy, uh, SEPT, all these institutions... Indian Institute of Management? Yes, Indian, yes, but that's not part of the Ahmedabad Education Society, but Dalaji was instrumental in getting IIM to Ahmedabad along with Vikrambhai. Vikrambhai and Dadaji brought a very many good institutes to Ahmedabad. Because he comes from my great-grandfather and my great-grandmother, my mother and other ladies of the family, to see at the gate if any poor person is there, he should not go hungry. So right from beginning, there is a tradition in the family to see 
that we serve the society as best as possible. Kasturbhai is credited with having said, in business there is no replacement for ethics. It is a creed that his heirs have stood by through hard times. No, when Dadaji passed away, every company was profitable. Mm, Arvind had never missed dividend in, from 1931 to 1980. So they were very, quite prosperous companies. But the first signs of problems uh, from power looms was almost on the horizon. So the troubles were to start. In the 80s, Ahmedabad's textile industry, which consisted then of more than 60 mills, collapsed because it could no longer compete with power looms in the unorganized sector. We were in the licensed Raj, so we were in the organized sector. We were constrained by a license, so we were not allowed to expand. And power looms could mushroom because they were the unorganized sector. They grew without any kind of permission and they had the labor flexibility. They were also on the wrong side of taxation. So with all those advantages, I think they really posed a major challenge. And because they grew very rapidly and they gave employment to a number of workmen, finally it became very difficult for the, for the government to do anything against them. So power looms really created a major problem for the organized sector. Arvind Mills would have died too were it not for a particular kind of cloth. How does ends with jewelry from Mughal emperors end with that most ubiquitous of 21st century pieces of attire, a pair of blue jeans? Because when the Ahmedabad textile industry was going through a deep depression, Arvind Mills reinvented itself through denim and became one of a small handful of mills that survived that depression. As for the future, it looks as there's going to be a lot more denim and manufactured garments. The Lalbai family appears to have come a long, long way. I think, you know, luckily when I entered business in uh, 1977, uh, I did realize that the problems, uh, we would not be able to compete with the barroom sector. So we started looking for a new product which would be accepted, you know, the fabric should be accepted globally. It should be the new generation of fabric, which is, which is, uh, you know, everyone wants it. So when we started looking at that kind of a fabric, we came to, we narrowed down on denim. And I think we started with a very small experiment, almost three million meters of capacity. And it worked. And uh, I also bought a small uh, jeans company, which had a brand name called Flying Machines. And Flying Machines started selling jeans. We started making denim fabrics and it worked to become one of the largest producers of denim in the world. Denim and uh, our business really took off from early 80s all the way to 1997 when we again faced the problem. Mm -hmm. The problem was that we had this uninterrupted kind of growth for almost 15 years. We did very well. Arvind became one of the most prominent textile mills uh, in India and it was globally recognized as a very good mill, very good producer of denim fabrics. Uh, then we decided that we want to branch out, we want to have more fabrics, we want to get into shirtings and gabardine and knits. Uh, we did all of them. Santej is the, is the kind of new complex which we uh, planned at that point of time. And we went ahead with a thousand crores of investment in these three new areas of textiles. And uh, as things would happen and Murphy's Law usually applies, Denim's profitability went down and we got our balance sheet leverage. So the worst period again came up and we faced a very serious threat to the survival of the company. So we had to put in a restructuring program. And I think it was a very, very transparent and a very good plan. So I think all the creditors and we had 85 creditors and we had to sell it to so many people in a group. And it took us almost two years to entirely thresh out the issues and, and have a very, very, uh, you know, solid kind of restructuring plan put in action. And we, you know, design the whole product and we manufacture it all the way from the fiber, which is cotton, all the way to the garmenting stage.
Arvid Mills has a future that looks bright, but Sanjay's son, Puneet, is more interested in social responsibility. In this case, saving India's wildlife. I mean, if you really think about it, perhaps, but uh, there has been no pressure. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that my family has never impressed upon me that I need to behave a certain way because I am Kasur Bhailalbhai's great-grandson. From as far back as I can remember, I've been deeply interested in the natural world. Perhaps some credit should go to my grandfather. When I was three and four, he used to sit down every day for two, three hours and read to me from natural history encyclopedias. That was the highlight of my day. Well, textiles also interest me, but the thing is that birds interest me more.